Hey guys, and what a wild year it's been, but one area that's been really interesting to watch over the past 12 months has been the rise of the mid-range phone market. There's been so much competition in that space between the ultra low end and the high end phones. And one phone that perhaps caught our attention more than maybe some of the others was the OnePlus Nord, which perhaps unusually was undercut by the Nord N10 a little later on. So which of these two phones should you get? Should you pay extra for the Nord or should you save a little money and go with the N10 instead? If you like this video, please do hit that thumbs up. We appreciate it very much and hit subscribe if you want to be sure not to miss any more. Anyway, let's get into it. Now, from the outside, there are a couple of key differences between the Nord and the N10. The cheaper model, the N10, has plastic on the back, which makes it feel cheaper in the hand. It's not as sturdy or durable feeling as the original Nord, but crucially, also feels noticeably bigger. Now, to be completely fair, neither of these phones is particularly small. They're both quite hefty devices, but the N10 definitely has more of that chunky feel to it. That sounds pretty negative so far on the N10 side, so let's balance it out a little bit by pointing out a couple of the practical things. First, plastic might feel cheaper, but it does bend, and that means it won't crack if you drop it on the floor. Then there's the fact that the phone also has a 3.5mm port for a headphone jack, which is useful for wired headphone users, and it also has a micro SD card slot for expansion, and has a physical fingerprint sensor too, which in our testing has been a little bit quicker and more reliable than the in-display fingerprint sensor. With all that said, I do prefer the feel and the build of the original OnePlus Nord to the N10, especially in this teal colour. As for displays though, there's not really any competition here. The AMOLED-based panel on the Nord is brighter and more vibrant than the LCD-based Nord N10. It really comes into its own when displaying blacks or shadows, because it's AMOLED. And it's HDR10 compatible too, which the Nord N10 isn't. Put them side by side and you'll notice this difference straight away. So while they feature the same resolution and almost the same pixel density, there's a difference in the way they reproduce colour. The dynamic range on the Nord is just superior, and that makes it a better canvas for watching your favourite TV shows, your movies or your games on it. And interestingly, even though they both feature that 90Hz refresh rate for smooth animations, the original Nord does feel a little bit smoother in terms of response to on-screen gestures as well, but that's almost certainly down to the processor inside the phone. The first Nord comes with the Snapdragon 765G chip, which for the most part gives really good performance. It's a fast and smooth experience and the phone loads apps and games quickly. Now, I'm not saying the Nord N10 is slow, it, it's not. It's perfectly fine and handles everything well, but it just lacks that bit of zip and speed that you get from its sibling. Sometimes it stutters a tiny bit, or when you go back to the home screen, it takes a split second longer to load the app icons. As for the battery life, that's pretty consistent across both. There's not a huge difference between them here. The bigger, cheaper phone has a slightly larger battery, but in real everyday use, even heavy users should find that it lasts through the full day. I'm quite a light user personally, and I find most days I had about 30-40% to 40 left over on both phones. That's with a couple of hours of screen time, casual stuff like Slack, emails, listening to music, and they're both 5G too, so there's parity there. Now what's worth noting, perhaps, not perhaps, what's definitely worth noting is something that's not necessarily in the spec sheet, and that's software support. The first Nord gets more regular security patches, and will get longer support for major software updates too. And from what we've seen from OnePlus so far, it seems the Nord N10 isn't going to get that much attention from software team at all. As it stands currently though, both of them are running a version of Oxygen OS that runs based on Android 10. It's a similar story with cameras. The Nord has a better primary camera than the Nord N10 thanks to having optical image stabilisation, but it does have a similar ultra-wide lens, plus those two extra low-resolution macro and depth sensors which are about as useful on both. Which is to say, not very. So the short version, stick to the primary camera, and the Nord will take better looking photos with better handling of colours, depth and detail than the Nord N10. So moving on to price, and here's the thing. In the markets where they both exist, there's not a massive difference between the two phones in terms of what you'll pay for either. In the UK, it's about £50 difference. So you do pay more for the first Nord, but it's only about £50 more. And for that £50, you do just get a better all-round phone. It's not worth spending less to get the N10, but for those where only one of these phones is available, the choice has been made for you. 
Although we'd suggest taking a look at Realme and Xiaomi phones too if you're looking at phones in this price bracket because there's some really, really competitive stuff out there. And the Nord N10 isn't as competitive as the OnePlus phones normally are in terms of value for money. So we hope you found this video useful in deciding which phone you should get. I mean, the choice seems fairly simple to me, but let me know what you think in the comments below. Which one you've bought or which one you're thinking of buying. I've been Cam, I'm at Cam Bunsen on social media. If you like this video, again, please do hit that thumbs up and subscribe and click that little bell to make sure you don't miss any of our videos. And I'll see you again in the next one.